The time is 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October 24th, and I'd like to call this work session to order. First on our agenda, our city updates. So Ms. Solano, please take it away. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, City Council, and Mayor Gratisars. There's only one city update that happens from last night to tonight, and that is uh, left a, a, a brochure and a flyer at, at each of your uh, desk spaces there for to share with any constituent group that has any questions with respect to the financial empowerment counseling. How do I get it? Where do I go? How do I make a, 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 an appointment? You have both the brochure and the flyer. Um, and that is, that's all the city updates I have tonight, unless you have uh, any questions about uh, FEC or direction. Thank you, Ms. Solano. And congratulations to the opening of the Financial Empowerment Center. Very exciting. Is this at United Way? There are, are six different co-locations, and so United Way happens to be one of them. Um, but um, the, the different co-locations are at the County DHS, at United Way, um, at the Housing Authority, and uh, at three others that have escaped me at the moment. Okay. Uh, so different times, different places, but in communities where people who you know have a bus line or they don't have to go as far, so they're different locations. Questions for Ms. Solano? I've been getting several uh, texts and calls over the past several days since this weekend about the fire in San Isabel. Do we know if it's, last time I heard it was 0% contained. Do we know anything? about that so san isabel they do have uh lines around it and the fire hasn't reached the lines but as far as saying it's contained it is not contained because it's within those lines but as of tomorrow they're upgrading the federal response to a type one response <laughs> Does this is the city involved in any of those that response, Chief? Not at this time. Okay. But just for your update, uh, there is a fire at Lake Minaqua right now that the county is helping us respond on. Is it just a grass fire? Yes. Well? Yes. Okay. Well, we will be sending positive thoughts to both San Isabel and Lake Minaqua uh, right now. Okay, any other questions for Ms. Solano? Seeing none, um, uh, really the majority all of today's work session is to finalize our conversation around the 2024 budget. Um, so I will hand it back to Ms. Romero where we picked up yesterday, um, kind of barely scratching the surface uh, slide four, yeah. but we were talking about we were talking about the economic dashboard. Economic dashboard, yesterday. yes. And uh, thank you, Alex. So before, uh, so before you, I think you have the ordinance number as well as um, kind of like the contract, probably from Dr. Bailey, as we were talking about the uh, dashboard um, from Councilor Flores. In case there's any questions about that, Alex, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, um, City Council, and Mayor. Um, before we finish this evening, uh, what I did, what uh, Councilor Flores asked me to bring was a copy of um, the proposal um, that lists the same dollar amounts. It doesn't specifically list a two-year period of time, but it does list all of the components that you discussed. And then also some of you, so there's only five copies of the proposal because I, I printed those after I killed the tree in, in printing the first um, ordinance. And the first ordinance then... Um, is, is printed for all of you and then the updated ordinance that uh, took the contract through um, December of 2023. So it's really at council's discretion on Councillor Flores' request to move the 55,500 addition into the 2024 budget. It, it, whenever you, you know, if you, whenever by the end of the session or. Yeah, do we have any feedback? Regarding that, Councillor Martinez Ortega. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm good with the 55 to finish it out and uh, transfer it over, or hand it off. Uh, I I think the uh, the ordinance itself, you know, confirms that uh, the two year cycle really <clears throat> got involved in all three years, 22, 20, the whole 20, 12 months of 23. And that there remains uh, three months through April one of twenty four, 
And uh, <clears throat> at the time that it was presented, it was uh, basically to be a two-year period. But I can see what you're saying. It did begin on April 1 of 2022. Uh, but if you use the dollar amounts, uh, they comport with uh, the amount of money that was allocated or prorated between those three years. But that's all I was wanting to confirm. Mr. Hippolyte. Um, th thank you, Madam Chair. I just sort of want to be clear to extend this contract past December 30th, 31st, 2023, we would have to take an action to amend the contract for those three months. It's fine with me. We, I think we did that at the beginning of January of 2023. So that amendment that's attached to um, what Ms. Solano provided mm -hmm. explicitly sets a term to expire on December 31st of 2023. So it didn't extend the term. And I, I believe that amendment was executed on the 27th of February this year. So February 27th, 2023. So we would need to take another action before December 31st, 2023 to extend it for those additional three months to get you to April of 2024. What, what does your records reflect for the period of, Jan of February 1 of 22 to December 31 of 22? I don't specific. I, I don't have any records of, of of what occurred during that period of time. I'm I'm merely saying for, with the budgetary action to approve the additional seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for Q1 of 2024, we would have to do something with the contract so that money could be allocated and spent. That's all. Yeah, and I just wanted to confirm that that was done on January one of twenty three uh, to bring the contract through December thirty one of twenty three. Uh, so, so no, I don't have I don't have a record of that. I have the 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 record that I have was ordinance number one zero three nine eight, which brought the contract to December thirty first of twenty twenty three. Right. It does not extend it past December. Uh, it does not extend it past December thirty first of twenty twenty three. So we need to take another action. I, I, yeah, and I think uh, yeah, and I I'm fine with that. But it was it was really something that Dan could go seek. Uh, had to do because I think he wanted to allocate the money over this, these three year periods, they overlap. So. Oh yeah. I'm, okay. I'm again, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I just wanted to, when, if that budgetary action is approved, we will have to just make council aware. We will have okay. to amend this agreement again for a second time to okay. add that three months to the term. So okay. it doesn't expire. Okay. Does council have a preference then? No, I just, just the extension as to when we do it. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of extending it through April. That is that is the termination date. And that was always, you know, that was always the termination date because I did when I sold this to the city council at that time, it was that the city would get things rolling. But I didn't want uh, an expenditure to be forever for the city. But I thought the only way it was going to get done and kept in the community was to put it in that format to get the ball rolling and uh, and then somebody else take it over on April 1. So I think the question on the table then is to extend the contract uh, such that the city would retain it through April 1 with the handoff being after that. Councilor Martinez Ortega. Yes. Councilor Graham. Yes. Councilor Tencio. Um, yep. Yes. Councilor Flores. Councilor Maestri. The majority of council then is giving direction to uh, move forward with that. Which comes first, the approval of the budget or the, uh, uh, the in this case, it would be a resolution, wouldn't it? Yeah, the, the order in which we approve it is irrelevant as long as both are done before December 31st of 2023. Okay. So I'll prepare, I'll prepare the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Solano. Yes, thank you. Just for clarification for the city attorney, there are two components. One is the contract extension uh, through um, March 31st. And the second is the additional um, 30,000 and 8,000 is part of what council's direction is for increasing the budget into next year. But those two amounts don't belong in the contract for Dr. Bailey. Those two different separate amounts will be um, accessed uh, through the city's budget somehow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Okay. Well, I I would think I would like to see some sort of commitment from whoever's going to take it over um, in April um, before we even approve for it to go further because 
there's no sense in wasting $55,000 if we don't have a buyer for it in the end. I mean, we're get, I don't, I know it's not happening until April, but it's a, been a very expensive investment and it would be nice to see that if we're going to continue to ex, um, finish it out, that we have a taker. I think that's fair. At well, this point. We're not going to, we're probably going to be working on this, not only through the end of this year, but the beginning of probably January. Mm -hmm. uh, but the exposure to the city ends on March 31. So, well, there's a contract that ends on December 31. Right. But this this particular contract has nothing to do with the secondary contract in which somebody else mm -hmm. takes it over. We no longer will have any responsibility going forward, any mm -hmm. financial responsibility or management. And, uh, you know, I, I'm working on that right now. But to tie the two together don't make sense to me because. It's either going to so happen. So what you're saying is we're obligated to this regardless. So you feel like we're obligated to this regardless? Well, it looks like I have the majority of the city council obligated to it. And I, I, that's what the original plan was from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, I like to say, like, it's great to put something like this in place, but it would like to see it carry on. That's well, it's that's my intent. Mm -hmm. My intent is to is to have it carried on. And I'm having those discussions with Petco right now mm -hmm. and with uh, several subscribers that want to sponsor it. Mm -hmm. I think I'll get it done and I'll, you know, when that happens, I'll bring it back mm -hmm. to the council. And I think, I think that's the right sequence, don't you? Well, I think that um, those things should, should already be in the works because we've been talking about it going, being turned over for the last year. So it would, yeah, it'd well, be nice got, to know that it, ha it has a home. I've got five months to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are actions that this council takes in a matter of two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Uh, so uh, I, I, it's something that I need to worry about and I'm going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Councilor Tentio. Dennis, you don't have any idea when they're going to be taking that over? Yeah, April 1. Uh, I'm, I'm in. I'm, no, I mean, uh, uh, she, she has a point. Right? Well, yes. As of then now, there is no one. And if no one appears between now and April 1st, um, you know, I mean, that's what I'm I, saying. I, I can is, see her point. That's, the, that's, the, yeah, that's I see the point too. To but, you know, that's kind of, uh, this has kind of been a project for me. Uh, I'm going to do everything possible to have somebody in place five months from today. Okay, I've got five months to work on this. That's always been my goal. I have Petco very interested in being the principal sponsor. I have several companies that want to pick up the cost, but I just have to bring it all together. The fact that we're doing our budget right now doesn't mean that I'm not working on the other. But after March 31st, the city will have no legal liability nor any financial responsibility. And so I guess you guys will just have to trust me that I'm going to try to put this together, you know, by April one, because I don't see what, I mean, what, what responsibility do you guys want beyond March 31? I'm just asking. Yeah, no, anyone. no. And I'm working I'm on it. That. Yeah. I yeah. Trust you. I yeah. Have all the data. Yeah. And I, so I'm, I'm going to do every, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that it remains the same. I have a commitment from Dr. Bailey to continue. And uh, Petco right now uses the dashboard for recruitment and they want to continue using it. So, but we just kind of bumped up our budget next to, you know, what I'm doing in order to get this effective in uh, next year. Great. I have full faith in Councillor Flores Thank to you. figure it out by April. We're going to move on, Ms. Romero. Okay. May I have please slide four? So the first slide that we're going to go through this evening is about the Tabor calculation. And this is the 2021 Tabor calculation to show you that $17 million that we had in excess revenue um, for after the Tabor calculation. So what it does is that it speaks to the actual revenue that would be Tabor 
subject to Tabor in 2020, which is that 98 million. And then there's a growth factor that's put on to that percentage. And then you come up with a figure of this is how much money you'd be able to keep if we weren't debruced. Then we go through and we compare how much revenue we actually received that would be subject to the Tabor calculation. And that is broken down by fund below, you see it's 101 million in the general fund, 15.6 in special revenue, and then smaller amounts in a couple of other funds. So then you take that number, you decrease the vendor fees that go to Public Urban Renewal Authority, and that takes us to that 117 million. So if we hadn't debruced, we would have had to give back to the taxpayers 17.2 million. Instead, that money, we were able to retain it, and that goes into our fund balance. It's not in any one specific area or allocated to any one item. And then in 2023, we used 7.5 of that to go, 7.5 million to go to road repairs. And then what we're doing in 2024 is allocating another 7.5 million from the fund balance to be for road repairs. So I just wanted to give that kind of breakdown and calculation as to how it's applied into the future year's budgets. The next slide is about the Highway User Trust Fund, an analysis that goes through what the fund has had activity from the beginning of January 2023. So the available fund balance at the beginning of 2023 was $7.87 million dollars. We had projects that were budgeted in prior years of 6.2 million, which gave us less the projects that we had for the current year of 820,000, bringing the total fund balance at the end of 2023 to that $823,000. The revenue projected for 2024 in the Highway User Trust Fund is $4.5 million, less the expenses, that we're projecting for 2024 at that 5.16 million will have us at a fund balance of 187,000. The next page gets down to the details of the 2024 budget. So it shows how we get to that 4.5 million in revenue. It's intergovernmental. A lot of it is the highway user tax trust fund contribution, and then smaller amounts from faster road and bridge levy, additional registrations. And then at the second half of the page, you'll see the capital maintenance and all of our expenses. So the 2.5 million that goes to road repairs, 199 for current projects that will be determined and 1.9 million transferred out to the general fund. So that shows the 5.1, a breakdown of what those expenditures are. The next section that we wanna talk about are the non-departmental agency requests. We have gone through and we have put the different agencies, then what the 2020 adopted budget is, what the 2024 recommendation is in the proposed budget and that percentage change. I will note that the Pueblo Heritage Museum is sitting here at 20,000. I know that you all had spoken about increasing that to 20 by 22,000 to make it 42,000. So that change will be made. It just isn't reflected on this PowerPoint that was um, presented for yesterday. So the Chamber of Commerce at 2020, we had a budget that was approved of 700,000. The recommended proposal is 975,000, which is a 28.2% increase. The Humane Society was at 1.3 million in 2022. The recommended proposed budget shows a $1.794 million for a 26.7% increase. The Pueblo Heritage Museum, as I stated, it was at zero in 2020 and the 24 proposed recommended will be at that 42,000. The Pueblo Zoo is 675,220 in 2020. And the recommendation is for 930, which is a 27.4% increase. Sangre de Cristo Arts Center, we had a, a adopted budget in 2020 at 275,000 with recommended this coming year of 300,000, which is an 8.3% increase. 
The Latino Chamber of Commerce was at 25,000 in 2020. 24's recommendation is 50,000 for a 50% increase. And finally on this page, HARP was at 326,172 in 2020. And in 24, we're recommending 508,000, which is a 35.8% increase. Can I ask a quick question, Alex? Yes. Why are we comparing four years ago from 2020 and not last year in 2023? Those increases from prior year to the current year are on the non-departmental sheet that were previously distributed. So it's just a, just a, a notation of the continuing increase on an annual basis, but from 2022 to 2023 to 2024 are on the sheet that was distributed. I have a question too. Uh, Councilor Flores. Yeah. Can we go to the HSPPR line there? Mm -hmm. uh, the 2024 recommendation, uh, how does that compare with the contractual obligation of uh, that we have? That's the amount that the contract requires. Okay. You so recall we, they came in and asked for more than the yeah, contract. We knew, I, I knew it was going to go up. And that, so that's the exact amount of our portion of it with with the, the renegotiated contract with them and the increase that they've yes. requested. And that is an, it represents an increase from last year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't represent what they requested this year, but it represents what we're contractually obligated to pay them. Right. And the only reason I'm bringing it up, it's almost as though it's a rec, that's what we're recommending. But I think this is really a firm... <laughs> Uh, liability that we have if we enter into a contract for an extension. And, well, and so, well, yeah, no, that's what we put in the budget. Mm -hmm. The right. uh, 1.794, that's our contractual obligation. Right. Which I just, it's different than the others because the others are negotiable. Okay. That would be correct. Yes. And then on the next slide on slide eight shows some of the non-departmental agency requests compared to what we have recommended within the budget. And so you do see the Humane Society that they had come in and they had requested uh, just over $2 million and we still have it at what the contract was, the 1.794 million. The Chamber of Commerce had requested 1.7 million and we retained that at 975,000. The Pueblo Heritage Museum, they had requested 125 and the mayor's recommended we will up that to what council had spoke about last night and have that at 42,000 and then the zoo we had the request of 1,063,000 with the recommended budget at 930,000 hey alex yes i know that the budget so i'm sorry i don't have that i wish i would have had that paper that miss solano referenced Oh, okay. I'm curious about what the budget committee's recommendation was. It's, it looks like the budget committee's recommendation is pretty consistent mm -hmm. with the mayor's recommendation. Do you, the budget committee, want to talk about any of these agencies at least? Uh, I think what we did was bump the ones that were are that the city owns or has contractual agreements in with their ass the zoo harp it's only harp we have here. the only one i see is harp and then uh mount carmel mount carmel oh yeah mount carmel that was a zero we bumped it to seventy five thousand because we don't do anything for veterans Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I thought that was kind of the shoulders of Yeah, that it was zero. So we bumped that one up. But I do see so in, so what Councilor Maifu just said about this um city contracts in terms of the humane study in the zoo, mm -hmm. they don't look to be different for the budget committee. I think we asked it to be different. We asked it to be this was our ask. Yeah, so it's five hundred and fifty eight thousand for the not for the zoo, but no for oh I'm sorry, it's for harp maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only one that you, it's heart maintenance. Zoo? No, just heart maintenance. I don't, Larry has my paper. Thank mm -hmm. you. In the future, I I should what I should do in the future is when we're doing these conversations is I'll just reprint everything too for everyone for the, because that's so handy, but it, I only brought the my budget book today. Mm -hmm. Lessons learned. 
Oh, we so the ones that we asked for presentations on, we were wondering what their additional ask was for. That's why those ones say presentation. Okay. Those were ones that the budget committee was yeah. wondering about. Okay. That's why it's presentation. Yeah, we wanted more in depth than the chamber, human relations commission. Um, we wanted to know what their funding was for. The zoo, we wanted to know their plan. And then the Heritage Museum, we wanted to know their plan. That was all we had. And then I think we were asking about the public food project too, the 40,000, since we've never funded them, what mm -hmm. that was about. And I think that was it. Mm -hmm. Well, given that the, we can talk about this later. You can continue on with Romero. That was oh. all my slides. Uh, oh, okay. so. this 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 slide is in why the the right hand column is empty. Is if council's ready this evening, uh, for direction to staff, um, um, Anna and, and Alex can uh, rebuild a B one for the impact on the fund balance. Um, and uh, we have just one week, uh, eleven six, to bring those to you with your direction before the first reading on eleven thirteen. So we wanted to make sure that you there. There's a couple of other holes in there that I should have added, and I apologize. And that's council's direction on the additional fifty thousand for harp that we could mm -hmm. put in there as well. Um, but we really are, are going down the list there to say what what is council's direction, and then Alex and Anna will go and make those changes in the B one, so we can print that for you. Hopefully by the sixth. Sixth, if your direction, it'll be by the sixth. If we need to go to the sixth to wait for your direction, then we uh, will make those changes, and you'll see the B one on the date of the first reading. And I think that's the benefit of of if you're if council's ready this evening, staff's ready to take direction. Um, well, with that, I so I would like to advocate for the zoo. Um, in fulfilling their agency request for the one million sixty three thousand. Um, in part because it's a city contractor that we have and accreditation is on the line. And if our zoo does not get accredited, um, I, I think that we're going to, I sincerely think that we're going to lose out on tourism dollars. I think that, um, I, I know that the realtors use the zoo when they're getting people to move here. It's such an asset and to improve our quality of life. And I would hate for um, them to lose their accreditation and also their workforce. You know, th those are also Pueblo citizens that are employed by the zoo. And so my my ask, I guess, of council, and I'd like to advocate is for, the, for us to give $133,000 more to fulfill the zoo's request to make them full and to retain not only this great city asset, but also um, in work to improve our quality of life, or at least retain this as the quality of life that we have. I'm uh, I'm prone to say yes to that 133 uh, specifically because they're catching a lot of their um, their workers um, up on their on their pay and catching those folks up because that'll also help retain those employees over time. Is that yeah? They, that was they the additional request asked mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. came for salaries. Correct. So it should be one sixty three. Correct. You know, one thing that should be considered is that um, the city ran the zoo forever, probably for a hundred years. The question is, how much do you think, if we were still running the zoo, what we would be paying for those employees? And I guarantee you, they would be getting much mm. bigger salaries than they are now. They have a complete turnover of people continually because uh, they're just paying them, um, you know, below market, really, if you look at other comparable jobs with their degree in um, animal, whatever their degrees are. But um, so I, I would agree to the to the increase. Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, as Mayor. Councillor Flores, I can remember when the city ran the zoo and when it was transferred to the Zoological Society. And the representation that was made to the city at that time was that they would be able to support themselves, that the subsidy that the city would have to pay would continually go down. 
Um, I haven't seen that. That's obviously not happening. I agree that the zoo is a tremendous amenity, but I think that we need to be careful because if we take away all the incentive for them to raise money uh, philanthropically uh, and just rely on the city, uh, we may as well just take it over and run it ourselves. I don't think that anyone is saying that this is going to de-incentivize them fundraising money. I think that the zoo does a great job at putting on not only, you know, an annual big fundraiser, but several events throughout the whole year um, for getting money there. The next one is going to be boo at the zoo, which isn't a fundraiser, but again, it's engaging with the community and fostering that good positive relationship with community members. And um, I have, I have tremendous confidence in Abby Krause to continue to do a great job in fundraising. But again, they they can't retain grant writers. They can't retain staff if they're paid below minimum wage. Well, last year, that was what they were going to use the money for, to increase wages. Now, we've increased, as you see here, 27% over the last four years, the amount of money we've made available to the zoo. And what you're saying is, let's give them more this year. I am saying that. Is uh, do we have their financial statement? It, it seems like uh, our contribution to the zoo uh, is is uh, a, a lot less than their total budget, and it seems like they they do get other revenue right through other sources. Yeah, I, if I remember correctly, they have grants that they get. Um, they they get private foundations. Um, they also they have membership fees, but also they do uh, found like uh, fundraising in terms of private donors as well. So I think it's a it's a it's a diverse portfolio when we're talking about revenues. Uh, uh, Alex, is, to, Alex is looking for the financial statement. The financial they, statement. They did they did submit it. I, I have to run downstairs to get the report. Um, but they Alex also asked for for the city to do the due diligence on your behalf uh, to request a copy of the um, of the accreditation report with respect to um, how underpaid and what requirements there are to retain their accreditation versus what um, items would be um, on the bubble that would cause um, them to lose accreditation. So Alex did ask for that and that's I think what she's looking for right now. Um, I, it, is, it is a delicate balance with respect to you know, what city council approves for them versus um, what the city department directors um, requested that was not approved um, by the mayor's recommendation for purposes of just being diligent with the city citizens' um, money. So there's yeah. there's a balance of those things, I think. That Yeah, uh, you're, what you're saying is we have departments that asked for more money to run their departments and they were given the same consideration as the zoo, like we're lacking what the departments need to run the city. Um, and I understand if when we have these contractual obligations, we hand these things over because um, it is a deficit to the city to continuously run things like this. And it's great to have an agency come pick up that contract, um, but they have to at some point really um, commit to their promise of being self-sustaining and taking it off, taking it off. As it is, we're giving them a million dollars still. And it's increased since 2020 rather than their commitment to going into contract and taking over the zoo was that it would decrease over the years to where they would be completely self-sustaining. Okay. So I, I think everything is increasing. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. We're comparing 2020 to 2024 with COVID, the amount of stimulus we took in, um, the Tabor, all of these monies we've been taking in and we've been spending like crazy now for four years. And now we want to tell our partners we're not going to fund their asks because the city's broke. I think maybe we need to take a look at $7.5 million for street rehab and look at how we're going to fund our partners um, in, in their needs because- these are contractual agreements between the city and our partners, the zoo, HSPPR, the chamber. I mean, all of these people count on us for money. We've been increasing their budget for four years. So are we just going to tell them now pump the brakes and we're not going to pay your people what we should be paying you? That's reckless. 
Well, if we don't have the money, Heather, I mean, we're working into Well, the... let's look at some of these capital improvement projects. I mean, let's not do your idea, your neighborhood for a million dollars. Let's cut the street re rehab to five million. I mean, we can't just, we can't just tell these people now we, we can't they fund you. They entered into contracts stating that they would be self-sufficient at one time. That's all. The contracts all don't say they're going to be self-sufficient at one time. That's not yeah, what it says. At some point. At some point. I mean, that's the reason why we hand them over mm -hmm. is because they I, I think we are very over expensive because they're to the, the subject city. matter experts so. in running that specific so. agency. And I think that the zoo has done a great job and the Zoological Society has done a great job at fulfilling their contracts. I We even saw how they're not even, I, I think when they came to council, we saw the salary comparison between city employees and zoo employees. And they've they, I mean, it's not even comparable. And when we're talking about uh, things like investing in uh, tourism and having an increased return on investment, this is, I mean, it's $133,000 more, sorry, $163,000 more than what they asked. And the return on investment that we are more than likely to see by investing in the zoo over a year because of um, it, you know, they're going to retain their accreditation status and there's going to be uh, more people visiting this. I mean, we're going to see that return on investment. So are you uh, willing to find something in the, but I mean, you know, because we're already over budget by 10 million. Are, is council willing to consider a cut somewhere else in order to just keep us at 10 million rather than 11 million over the budget, 12 million over the budget, 13 million over the budget? Because that's what we did last year. Um, we increased the budget, we were over, and we made increases um, on the budget. And they were non-departmental increases, by the way. Um, and the mayor said when we he introduced the non-departmental increases, he said that there's part of these that just aren't really part of the charter. Last year, I remember you saying when we were visiting the non-departmental that you said, you know, think about these because they're really not part of the charter, not the contractual ones, but the non-contractual ones. You said that. Um, and sometimes that's where we need to make cuts because the departments need their things first and foremost and the city needs what it needs. I mean, I don't think we can cut roads. We're already, um, you know, we've already deprived the city of roads for many, many years, many years. And we have a 1200 miles to cover to repair, um, that's a lot, that's quite a bit. So we've got a hundred out of the way. We got 1100, you know, 1100 more to go. Councilor Flores. Uh, you know, in my opinion, there's, you know, when somebody like the zoo is asking for an increase, uh, you know, for a contribution, uh, I think about two things. One, all of the assets, that they operate the zoo on belong to the city. We own all of those buildings, all of that land. It's part of our park system. And then I think about one other thing. I think about when the city ran the zoo, and I'm old enough to remember uh, at the treatment of the animals and the unprofessional approach that was done in the old days of having bear pits and, and other things that should never, a zoo should never do. <clears throat> And then you, we brought in this professional organization and, and they changed the whole appearance of the zoo, uh, the care of the animals. And so they're doing an amazing job. And that's because we went out and we hired professionals to do it. And in this particular case, I've got to believe that their budget, that this only represents maybe a third of their budget. As, as I recollect, I think they have a budget of close to $3 million dollars just the food alone to feed those animals. I can't imagine what they're paying now. Uh, I'm imagining that they may have doubled their the food prices on them. And uh, they're only wanting to get over this hump with this uh, COVID thing that we've had. But there's a big difference between, you know, providing uh, funds to, to nonprofits that the city func does not function under directly and an asset that belongs to the city. And uh, I've got to believe that they're being very modest in their request. When you think about the types of things that we've seen, the increased costs in construction, uh, you know, getting 
outside the contract of our union contracts and providing, uh, you know, significant increases because of inflation. And I, I think this is really a modest request. And I, you know, I, I say we give them the 133. Other, so Councilor Tencio, yes. So are we good to then do um, it? So increase the zoo, zoo's ask to what they, um, for the agency request, Councilor Martinez Ortega. Councilor Martinez Sorry. Ortega for the zoo's request. Yes. Councilor Graham. Yes. Councilor Tencio. I'm a yes. Councilor Flores. Yes. Councilor Maestri. I'd like to see us try to make it up somewhere else so that we're not like millions and over the 10 million. Okay, mm -hmm. I think let's decide on this conversation first, and then mm -hmm. we'll go back to that, Councilor Maitree. But um, did staff hear that direction? Great, Councilor Flores. I, I wanted to ask our um, financial director. Um, a comment was just made that we are right now ten million over budget. Is that a correct statement? So what we are budgeting as of right now is that revenue will come in projected. At 122 million, the expenses are at 132. So that does have us going into fund balance for 10 million, 263,000. But that still has us at an ending fund balance of 37.6 million dollars. The fund balance right now is 30. So the fund balance right now that we're looking at uh -huh. going into 2024 as projected is 47.8 million. Okay. And so part of the reason we have structured the budget the way that we have is because we are spending the money that we got in 2021 from the sales tax revenue rather than holding it and not spending it for city resources. And that's a lot of it going towards the 7.5 into the road repair. And I have done, I, I have a 10 year, budget that I have created to make sure that as we're doing these budgets and these proposals, that we are being aware of what this is going to do in 10 years, even looking out into 15 years and knowing that if we spend more in this area, we might have to cut in this area. If we are looking at our revenue, we need to be, uh, We, I always like to be conservative with the revenue because that's something that you don't want to count on and spend all of it and then get to a point where you are at zero fund balance. But the way that this budget is structured, having us budgeted so that we still would have 37.5 million in our fund balance, I'm comfortable with the way that this is presented. And what what would be the GASB rules regarding a community our size with a with a budget of 132 million? What would GASB say would be an adequate uh, surplus or fund balance? So the only thing that they say as kind of a guideline, they don't have a requirement would be three months of expenditures. And so what we have is we still have that table reserve that we do with 3% and then we do the council contingencies at either 10 or 12%, depending on the year. And even after that reserve, we still would have 20.6 million if we received zero revenue coming into the city, we would still have 20.6 million to continue operations until we started seeing more revenue. So, so what you're saying is that uh, a logical fund balance or surplus uh, is somewhere around. Uh, let's see if they, is that 33 three, three. I'm 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 trying to divide that, but I can't. Twenty five percent. Okay, so what would that amount be? 25 into 132. So that is 33. So we technically have a surplus right now, 13 million over what Gasby says is kind of uh, best practices for a community our size and a budget of 132. And I would have to look to make sure that that is what it, what the requirement or what the guideline is right. by GASB, because I, I I don't have that memorized, but I believe it is three months is, or is what you should be striving towards. Yeah. But I think that there is a minimum of at least that 10% that you want to retain. Sure. Um, but 
Yes, the way that this budget is structured and looking at it for this year and then going forward mm -hmm. with the with the amounts that we are looking at, we are still in a good position. We wouldn't be, the money that we're spending that's extra is due to what we collected in excess. So it built up our fund balance. So we're able to be able to spend more. And for instance, on the roads to repair them for when we haven't been able to do that in prior years. Yeah, but I just I just want to be sure that the conversation, um, you know, be, if you compare our budget uh, to another community in Colorado, uh, like Boulder or whatever, we we are a very poor city, mm -hmm. and I think we do a hell of a good job in spending our money effectively. But when you you look and you you hear people say, "Gee, we're in the hole," such and such. They're not looking at the fund balance that we have. And so, you know, if we have to readjust that, we're still going to be on the positive side of the Gasby rules of, of three months. So, I mean, we've got to be logical here and not, you know, indicate that, uh, well, she that the sky created, is falling. She created the budget, even though it is over 10 million. She's saying based off of what she, what they created, what the mayor recommended, we could still be over at this amount and still function at an overage every every year for so long. But that doesn't mean we can take what they gave us to work with this year and inflate it even more. Well, and I will say that looking at these figures, we do know that there are going to be areas that we don't go up to that amount. And really looking at the personnel costs, that's an area. We budget as if every single position is filled and that the fringe benefits, the health insurance is at the very top. Every single person that would be hired in filling those positions picked family for every single one of those benefits. And so while we budget to make sure that we can cover all that, it's unrealistic to think that we are going to be able to fulfill all of those vacancies, at least in this one year. But it is something that we need to make sure because our goal is to get to that point where we are 100% occupied. So in the next, when I'm looking at this year and maybe in the next couple of years where I don't foresee us being at the point where we would have all the full-time positions fulfilled, we still would have savings within this expenditure. Mm -hmm. So realistically, I'm thinking that if we spend into fund balance, that number is not gonna be as high. And you can even see that in the 23 projected. When we were here last year, we had that number at 16.87 million, and now it's down to 10.3 million. Mm -hmm. And we've also told department directors at this point that we should not be spending for items that aren't necessarily so necessarily something that they need at this right now, that we should wait and just make sure because our sales tax had decreased mm -hmm. in a couple of the months. Mm -hmm. So I, I do look at all those different pieces to make sure. And to your point, um, Councilor Maestri, if we do have some increases here and there, I, I do have that factored in so that I know that there's a percentage of either going up or down that we would still be able to sustain because we know as we present this budget that there are going to be decisions that are made by council for changes within that. Uh, is there is there uh, any way of uh, having a historical average of how much we do not spend because of the vacancies that we have? Uh, if, if we're short 50 police officers, and we were that last year, mm -hmm. that meant that the budget included those 50 slots, but that money was never used because we never filled the positions. Right. So the question is, how much, uh, you know, what is that number for last year, mm -hmm. which is what we budgeted versus what we really expended? And it's got to be a significant amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is something that I could get those actual figures because right now the long-term budget that I'm looking at has the actual number. So I would have to go back and look at the budgets to see what we originally had budgeted and compare those. She is online and I could maybe do that. My last comment is this, all the, ch all the changes that we've been talking about here 
sound like they're crushing our budget. It sounded like we started with a deficit of, of 10 million. So far, we've only added $265,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're the bad guys up here. We're, we're uh, spending money like drunken sailors, when in fact, it's only right now with my dashboard with the 22 for the museum, 75 for Mont Carmel, we've only talked about $265,000. So now is it 10 million, 265? It's a drop in the bucket. Mm. We're just making these little adjustments. Councilor Atencio. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say ever since I've been here, the funded uh, positions have never, that's why we balance a budget every single, every single year that I've been here with the funded positions that weren't filled. So we're in the same position as we've always been, probably even better from what I can And hear. that's why I think it's important that they're in there so that if we did have all of a sudden every single position we filled, we would still be able to meet our budgets. Yeah. But there is that awareness that we know that we're going to have that salary savings because it's just unrealistic to think that we're going to be able to fill all those. And our projected income for 24 uh, sounds right. It's where we, uh, the expenses, we could balance the budget by just not doing some of the things in 24 that are budgeted. So, and we are very and, similar. And some of them are going, not going to be done mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And some of them are going to be, um, cost a lot less than what we projected. So we're, we're in very good shape. Um, just really quickly, what speaking of personnel and uh, positions that we have budgeted, can you remind me or maybe my fellow counselors, what did we decide on the secretary for or the admin for council? There has not been a decision. It is still included in the proposed budget. Do we want to talk about that and make a decision today? Keep it in the budget, but remain it unfilled, I think was the last conversation that we had. Does anyone feel? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, did we have a description? I know that Marissa Pacheco was going to send us. Masano. I haven't had an opportunity to send that. Yes, hello. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to send that, but I, I certainly can. I will make it up. The thing was the same thing as JV because the past, right? Yeah, but he had a year. Andra, you're not. Uh, he had a year. Andra. Don't say anything just in case. <laughs> I'll get that job description out to you all. Um, I can even send it this evening. Okay. Uh, so that was, so it sounds like we're going to just retain it in the budget, but have it be unfilled is, th- does anyone feel strongly about that? About what? Uh, retaining the bud, the oh, yeah. line for no, this. Admin. I think we're going to need something like that. How we decide to execute it is at a later date okay but keeping it in the budget i guess mm-hmm. yes. we good for that we don't have the money in our yes so it's in council it is um built into the city council's budget on page d-7 so it's it's fully funded in there for what you decide to do with it you couldn't fill it till next year's budget anyway so for council to decide what to do in january or february whenever you decide Mm-hmm. Other um, questions or comments? That so, Alex, that was the end of the slides, right? Yeah. It, yes, it was. I know Councilor Flores has a question about the non-departmental yeah. list. Yeah, it's just it's just I want to focus on the Latino Chamber. If you look at all of these, um, all of these non-departmental uh, budgeted items, almost everybody stayed the same. And in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and, and about 14 to 16 actually got an increase. The only one that got a decrease of 100% was the Latino Chamber. Their request was at 100,000, and all we're giving them is 50, or the recommended is 50. Why does that stand out like a sore thumb? Well, I'll tell you why it stands out like a sore thumb. Because that's one that last year we'd historically given them twenty five thousand. Last year, council wanted to give them initial seventy five thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, given the additional seventy five thousand to create this program, you heard the um, 
the presentation here, they haven't spent the money that we gave them last year. Um, that's why I didn't believe when we reviewed their requests that we needed to give them that. So we doubled what we'd previously given them, but it's half of what council gave them last year. But that I think is the reason why that was reduced there. And let me say one other thing about Mount Carmel, because as I understand it, council wants to put that in for 75,000. We start, helped start Mount Carmel. When they wanted to come to Pueblo, they came to the city, they came to the county, we agreed to give them 75,000. They told us then that they needed help getting started, but that they would not have to rely on the city for support on an ongoing basis. And I don't think they do. I've looked at their financials. They're doing very well here. But if the city's willing to give them 75,000, they're gonna take it. And if nobody wants to say no, then we can spend the 75,000. Sorry, did they ask for it? Yes, they did. They asked for the 75. But they said they probably wouldn't need to rely on the city. We gave then them a $75,000. We gave them $75,000 to get started. Yes. Uh, and to help them get organized. We didn't pay them any. We didn't give them any money last year. Uh, they didn't ask for any money, as I recall, last year. This year, they did send it in for 75000 My recommendation was, no, they're up and running. They're doing well, they're expanding, they're, and they're providing great services to veterans. But um, certainly if it's council's prerogative if they wanna start that tradition, if you will. Councilor Martinez Ortega. If it was their one time ask to get started and it seems like they're doing fine, um, then I'm with the mayor to, um, to stick with the recommendation of the mayor. Maybe we should have them come to council because we obviously weren't on the council when they came and said it was just going to be a one-time ask. I don't know how long ago that was. Dennis, do you? Oh, that's got to be close to three years ago, I think. So can we get them to come to council? Mount Carmel? Yes, certainly. Um, we can ask them to come. You do have... Um, your recommendation in at the same um, 75,000 as well, but I think it would be fine for me to invite. Um, was that it, Councilor Flora, yeah, that's, about this? Yeah. Okay. You know, as I guess we're talking about staff too and, and budgeting for this next fiscal year, um, I know that the city has a pretty rambunctious goal to be uh, zero net by 2035. Is that correct? Zero net? 100% renewable. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, uh, so 100% renewable by 2035. Um, I know that President Biden was actually going to come to Pueblo to visit CS Winds um, as part of the you know, a nationwide plan to become cleaner. I know that we have a part-time energy advisory coordinator. I'm wondering if there's a potential to either uh, have another part-time energy advisory coordinator or to have that position full-time, given that we have less than, you know, like it feels like by 2035, that's going to run out very quickly. Um, and even listening to the Energy Advisory Commission come and present the other day, they said, yeah, this is, this position is great, but can you imagine what we could all get done with more capacity? And so I'd like to have that conversation of either having another part-time coordinator or having a full-time energy advisory coordinator specifically um, in the city to, to expand the efforts around that goal and energy thing conversations. Does anyone have any? Well, things? wouldn't that be Councilor My Street? Really, doesn't it come down to Black Hills Energy and whichever way proven source they decide to um, choose to move this city forward? I mean, Black Hills Energy is our supplier. Are they going wind and solar? Is yeah, no, I don't, I don't think it co does come down to Black Hills Energy. They'll play a key part, obviously. Mm -hmm. But one of the fantastic things about what's happening in Washington, D.C. is that with this Inflation Reduction Act and the um, Infrastructure Act is that it now makes some sense for the city to invest in its own solar energy because we'll get the same 
tax credits, even though we don't pay taxes, but we'll get credits there that make that much more economical for us. So we're working right now in the city and the energy tax coordinator and public works are exploring, you know, what would it take to put solar panels on our garages? Uh, what would it take to put solar panels on our parking lots so that we can take advantage of some of that energy, number one, and number two, get those energy tax credits to do that so that we can. So aren't those going to have, aren't, aren't whoever's going to be on those um, committees, they're going to have to be experts in, in that field, right? They're mm -hmm. not going to. If we're going to have an energy advisory committee or person, that person's going to have to be an expert in what that replacement energy is. It's not going to be well. Just they'll have to be able to find the experts. They'll have to be able to find the experts. Yeah, and you know, part of what uh, our charge has been now is to sort of help analyze the federal statutes, analyze what money is available to the city. That's what the energy coordinator is, is spending some time on now and exploring how we can, as a city, increase our renewable energy portfolio, if you will, how we can generate some of that renewable energy for us without going through Black Hills, if you will. So uh, they're exciting. I mean, they're really exciting uh, things that are happening. And I guess, I guess, uh, in terms of all of the funding that's coming down from Washington, and given the interest of you know, our national government in this topic, I am hopeful that we as a city can leverage those, uh, you know, those funds and those monies. And I guess that's why I'm advocating to expand that position yeah. from part-time to full-time. Well, we just brought them on. And I think well, I certainly would entertain that discussion. I think it's premature at this point, but I, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, I've certainly, it might be next, we come back to you in the middle of next year saying, hey, we think that this makes some sense. This is the projects we're working on. We can't get it done with a part-time person. We either need to bring another part-time person on or bring on this individual full-time. I, 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 yeah. Councilor Tentio. It, it, it is premature. There's also another thing that's coming down with the state legislature, which is community choice um, aggregation, community choice energy. Uh, that legislation will allow the city to aggregate our electricity needs and literally be able to go out and uh, find a utility scale solar company to provide all of our electricity. We really, we literally will have the choice between uh, Black Hills and anybody else that we bring in if that legislation goes through. And uh, if uh, the, the uh, electric companies want to compete and they'll lower their rates. So I, I think it is premature. Did you miss Romero? I have two other items that I wanted to bring up before we were out of session today. Um, so I did have my friends in the sky, Anna and Bree, they looked up at GFOA and the recommendation is no less than two months. So that actually is 16%, which looking at our proposed budget would be just over $22 million in reserves is what GFOA recommends. And then also while I was sitting here, I did look at the budget versus actual fund balance um, for 23, 22, 21, and 20. So in 2023, we positively were 6.5 million. So we had budgeted 16.8 into the fund balance and we're looking at projected at 10.3 million. When we look at 2022, we had budgeted to go into fund balance $4,228 and we actually were positive 12.9. So that was a 12.920 flip in the positive. In 2021, this was the great year that we had with revenue we had budgeted to be going into fund balance 7.1 million and we were on the positive 15.48. So that actually was a $22.6 million difference. And in 2020, we had budgeted into fund balance at 5.9 million and actual, we were positive 2.3. So that was an $8.2 million flip. So when I look at that, I know that 2021 was an outlier. I would say that between eight to 10 million is typical for what we have seen 
in the last few years. And I mm-hmm. only did go back to 2020 while I was sitting here. Brilliant. Could, Two could months you, makes me so nervous. Could you put the- Absolutely. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Mayor. Well, I want to make a point. I think somebody suggested that we tell people that we're broke and that the city doesn't have any money. And that's not the case at all. The city's in terrific financial shape right now. Uh, and in fact, if the council adopts the budget that we proposed or as the council has suggested would modify, we will have at the end of next year, $12 million more in reserves than we had when I came into office in 2019, $12 million more. Think of the things we've done in the last five years. Uh, and we're going to have $12 million more in the bank and the city shouldn't just keep money in the bank. I mean, that's the taxpayer's money. They expect us to invest that money for their benefit. And that's what we've tried to do and what we'll continue to do uh, as we move forward. Well, great. Solano, did you have anything? Yeah, yeah, one last comment. I'm going to ask um, Alex and, and Anna with uh, mayors in your direction to um, print a B1 for you to update that um, for the 11-6 with these adjustments that I think I heard from council tonight. Increase for the HSPPR increase to what they asked versus their contract. And then the city attorney will have to figure out what to do with the contract. Um, the, um, I think we said that. You didn't say that yet. Leave HSPPR the same as the contract. That's what your recommendation is. Oh, I guess they got that different direction than from from what their ask was. I believe the uh, the city contract they were talking about was the Pueblo Zoo. Yeah. So then twenty two thousand for the museum, one hundred thirty three thousand for the zoo, fifty five thousand for the dashboard, the fifty thousand for HARP that the budget committee recommended, and the seventy five thousand dollars for Mont Carmel that the budget committee recommends as well. Pending a work session presentation from Mount Carmel. Well, you you don't have enough time for the pending for an updated B1. Either we can do an updated B1 with it or without it, and then they can modify finance can before the first reading. Um, but we can put it in or leave it out at your, I mean, it's just some helping Anna and Alex. Uh, for, you um, can always take it out. If they come and say they don't need the money, then. Okay. Yeah. And um, just to, mo- to, can we, to modify, it would be 163, not 133 for uh, Pueblo Zoo. So we'll have it at the the 1,063,000 is what we'll put the proposed budget figure at. Did you have something, Mayor? Was that? No. That is, we will make those changes though for the B1. And then I have one last question and that's council's intent for, did you want, may I look, Councilor Otencio asked for the, be the streetscape beautification of a million dollars. Is that out of fund balance this year, sir, uh, for ending the last eight weeks of the year or in the 2024 budget? Whatever's most feasible. I, I'm not privy to the bet, to the budget and how you do it. So whatever's most feasible. Can I request a work session on that? Sure, for the street beautification, just so we can all find out more about it. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it out for the B one. Okay. Stephen has a a plan as to what projects are going to be done with that money, and he's he's put it together so he could <laughs> he could tell us all about it. All right, Stephen. Uh, Councilor Maestri, do you have anything? Oh, also, sorry, before Councilor Mike Street, apologize. Um, did that include the, the uh, for the economic dashboard? Did I hear that as well? Thank you, Ms. Lano. Uh, Councilor Mike Street. Um, yes. And, you know, I just would like to say if we've got so much money, I'd like to see some more road improvements, okay. more, more money um, dedicated towards road improvements, because that's just a huge uh, issue out there with the people. More road, more road. Hey, if we've got this money to spend, let's spend it on roads because 10 million bucks a year. Well, the last even, three years. even more would be even better if we're going to be spending because that is that that's the big talk around town. Never enough. Miss Solano, did that conclude the direction that you needed today? Great. Miss Romero, fantastic job. And those that helped online that were the friends in the sky, thank you for doing some quick calculations. Uh, other final. Well, I thought comments? you were going to. Yep. Yeah, no, I thought you were going to talk about combining departments. Weren't you going to talk about combining departments? Didn't you say about zoning and and uh, housing? Mm-hmm. 
Uh-huh. Yes. And, and so why don't you tell us about that? Well, we're still working through it at this point. Um, by the time you get your final budget, it should be in there in terms of how what what that organizational chart would look like. But the housing director would become the housing manager under the um, supervision and direction of the um, zoning department. Uh-huh. So you still have two director heads, basically two director salaries coming out of that or no? That's we're working through that right now. It probably wouldn't be a director of housing. It'd be a manager of housing or housing manager or some some term like that that we're working through. Mm -hmm. I want to just note that the Planning and Zoning Commission starts at seven. So maybe that's the, that's the future work session. Mm -hmm. OK, so I'm I'm going to conclude this work session at 6.1 p.m.